Hi guys, I'm Melissa from cladmom.com. This is month 16 with your baby, also month 16 with my baby Bracey, although since he was 10 weeks premature, his corrected age is 13 and a half months. The average 16 month old baby boy weighs 23 pounds, two ounces, which is 10.5 kilos. And the average baby girl weighs 21 pounds, six ounces, which is 9.8 kilos. At his 16 month checkup, Bracey weighed approximately 9.8 kilos, which is 21.56 pounds. He weighed essentially the same as he had in the prior month, but his doctor was not concerned. Although Bracey's weight and his head circumference held steady, he did move slightly up the charts in terms of his height. How much should my 16 month old be talking? About half of 16 month olds can say about three words and some very chatty toddlers can say even a few more words than this. None of my older children were speaking at this point. Bracey is not saying words. He's saying mama and bebe. I did the other day hear a little bit of a mm at the end of ma, like a little bit of an almost mama. But other than that, I have not heard any whole entire words as of yet. If you are very concerned about this, check with your doctor. But again, there's a huge range of normal when it comes to when babies talk. My doctor told me that as long as I see development in bracy speech, increasing arrays of sounds, consonants, chattering, and I see a change that there's no reason at this point to be concerned. How much should my 16 month old be moving? Many babies are walking at this point. Bracey just started walking, although he's not really doing so yet in a stable fashion. He can take just a few steps. Walking is going to lead to running, dancing, jumping, and even more activities. So parents, get them sneakers on. You are off to the races and this is not gonna settle down until your toddler is a lot older and is able to play and do things on his own, which is gonna be, frankly, in a few years. So it's a tiring, tiring, even exhausting time for parents. In terms of your baby's social and emotional development, continue to interact with them as much as possible. Hugs, kisses, games, smiles, chats. You should be hugging, kissing, spending time with your baby all day long. There is no such thing as a spoiled 16 month old and there is no benefit to leaving your baby alone. You want to be with your baby as much as possible when they are not asleep. Although you want to shower your baby when it comes to love and affection, you might notice them becoming increasingly independent. Try to give them control over small little things that don't matter. If you pick them up and they're wriggling like they want to get out of your arms, just let them get down. If they show a preference for one healthy food over another, let them go for that food. Same thing with toys. Same thing with books. Try to give them choice and decision making and authority over these small little things. And that helps, in my experience, when it comes to temper tantrums which result, I think, a lot from babies not feeling like they have any control. A lot of parents wonder about temper tantrums, how to discipline a child this age, and how do you develop empathy in a child this age? According to my doctor, it's way too young to think about disciplining a child this age. But what you can do is address behaviors that are clearly not good, such as hitting, biting, and throwing certain things like food. And you can also, when it comes to things that affect you in the wrong way, and I think this goes towards the empathy point, you can react. So when Bracey pulls my hair, which he does all the time, I say, no Bracey, we don't pull hair, no pull hair, that hurts mommy. And I try to make it clear from my face that I don't like the behavior. I'm not being mean or anything like that, but I want him to see that his behaviors have an effect. And I think this is a good thing to do when it comes to introducing your child to the notion of emotions. You can also try to find children's books in which the characters are experiencing emotions and that can help your baby as well. Intellectual activities for a 16 month old baby. At this point, as was the case in prior months, your intellectual activities are also going to be some of the physical activities you're doing for gross and for fine motor skills. The key differentiating factor in my view, and this is something to incorporate with all your activities, is language and recognizing things like numbers, colors, shapes, 
fabrics, textures, all those sorts of sensory things are good to introduce into the activities your baby is doing to develop more their cognitive abilities. So what do you do with your baby on a daily basis? I've talked about this many times. Bring them with you as much as possible. Talk as much as possible. Describe things as much as possible. Just treat them as if they are your little friend. When you're at home, try to sing, try to dance, try to read as many books as you can. What you want is a constant flow of words directed towards your baby. Being somebody who loves books and reading has been a really big priority for me as a mom and I think it's paid off because most of my older kids are readers. I have really, really struggled when it comes to reading to toddlers. I actually read to my older kids during meals for many, many years and it was not easy. What I have realized is that it's not really that you need to be reading your baby a book and they're hearing the words of the book and looking at the pictures of that book at the same time. And this you can only get at best for a few minutes when it comes to a baby this age. Here's what you can do. Number one, give your baby one book that they can play with and manipulate so they feel that control and they get the fine motor in there while you're reading your baby another book, number one. Number two, read to your baby when they're in the stroller, the high chair, or the crib and try putting more books around in the crib so that they are playing with books and doing stuff while you continue reading to them. This is the only way to read to a baby this age. And the key thing here is that the language, the words, your expressions are all going into your baby's little brain regardless of whether they're looking at the story at the same time. In terms of other gross motor skills, if your baby's walking, you want to encourage that. Getting in and out of a chair is a great idea. Climbing upstairs is a great idea. Going down the side and climbing up the slide is a great idea. You can try obstacle courses at home. You can try bowling. You can try building a fort. All these kinds of things to get your baby moving around, developing their strength, developing their agility, moving up and down are just great when it comes to gross motor. There are some key components to your baby's diet that you wanna make sure that you get and they're very similar to what we adults need to eat. In my view, the best thing you wanna do is to concentrate on giving fresh, wholesome food, unprocessed food. Try not to give sugar, try not to give white bread, try not to give white rice. Do not give donuts, do not give cookies, certainly do not give ice cream, chocolate, none of that stuff, your baby doesn't need it, don't even go there yet. Later on, you can give that in the form of small treats. What do you want to give? You want to have a diet that's rich in calcium. According to my doctor, your baby should be getting about three eight ounce cups of milk a day if they don't have other sources of calcium and there are other good sources. Some people say more 700 milligrams. You want a diet that's high in iron and vitamin C helps the body to absorb this. And you want a diet that's healthy and rich when it comes to fiber. You can really be giving variations of what your family's eating. Oatmeal in the morning, pieces of whole grain pancakes, skip the syrup, scrambled eggs, lunch, pasta, pasta with sauce, rice with beef, chicken, all sorts of other kinds of lean meats with pastas, with rices, with cooked soft vegetables. You wanna give all different types of fruits. Make sure they're cut appropriately and they're soft so that they're not a choking hazard. You should be giving your baby whole milk, even if you're still breastfeeding, and you should be cutting down on the bottle by this point. Guys, your baby should be drinking out of a cup. I've been having a really hard time getting Bracey to continue to breastfeed. He breastfeeds pretty well in the morning. The other breastfeeding sessions are pretty short. He's extremely distracted. In some ways it's clear that he's weaning, but I wanna keep nursing him, so we're fighting this battle. It's very tricky for me too, because I don't know how much milk I should be giving him. I went to my doctor and I'm like, what should I do? I don't wanna fill him up with milk, because then he's not gonna nurse, but my doctor said he has to be getting that hydration. He needs water, he needs milk, you have to give those things. So what do you do? You just kinda of play around with it. You mix in milk into your baby's oatmeal in the morning. You try to supplement with a lot of yogurt. You try to supplement with cheese. You try to make sure there's enough calcium. Broccoli is another good source. And you try to breastfeed and after meals and when your baby wants water and milk, you certainly give water and milk. So that's kind of what I'm doing now. Non-nursing moms, as I said previously, you wanna have three glasses of about eight ounces of milk or 700 milligrams of calcium per day. One other thing, 
I am still giving the milk first because I find it with the nursing still to be easier. You might choose to do that. Or if it's not an issue for you, you might be giving the meals first and then giving the milk. It's pretty flexible at this point. Not as much of a concern as it was when your baby was much younger during the first year when formula or breast milk was the key component of their nutrition. Tips for picky eaters. This is a huge issue for many parents. It's very stressful when your baby doesn't eat. One thing that's kind of hard to realize, but it is true, we see our little babies as being machines. You know, one day they eat all their eggs, one day they eat all their oatmeal, the next day they don't and we're so confused and we're wondering what's going on. Well, guess what guys, they are like us. Some days they're more hungry, some days they're less hungry. Some days they're more tired, some days they're less tired. Doctors often say that on certain days, babies will eat a lot less than they will eat on other days. And you can't stress so much about it. You wanna give a very healthy, rich and varied diet. Okay, no judgment here, but I have known mothers that only gave snack food to their kids or kids ate no real food. I knew a mother who only gave grape juice and frozen small pancakes, no judgment because I've made plenty of mistakes as a mom. How do you avoid this kind of thing? According to my doctor, introduce, introduce, introduce. You keep putting those fresh and varied foods out in front of your baby and sooner or later, boom. The other thing I would say, and I have a lot of kids, I have six, so we can't have like Melissa's restaurant, one meal and that's what they get. I mean, I'm not gonna like prepare, you know, filet mignon for you and salmon for you and oh, you want Cheerios, no, 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 no. This is dinner and that's it. And if you, after your dinner, fruit and milk during the week, on the weekends we have desserts, that's it. You have to have rules and standards, that's what I think. If you guys have the time to prepare like special meals for each kid, by all means, go ahead and do it. But I think it's gonna create a fussy eater. My oldest son is one of the pickiest eaters I've ever met. He had no solid foods until eight months and then he only had sweet fruits and yogurt. It was dreadful. It was really hard to get him to eat vegetables. For years, we gave him like a sweet potato shake. We boiled sweet potato and mixed it with milk and that's how he had a lot of his vegetables. We would try to throw in a little like green vegetables that he wouldn't see. He was a very picky eater. He is still, in my view, not a great eater, but I do my best. I force him to eat his vegetables. He only eats pears and I you know, make sure he gets all those things and I know he sneaks in and gets ice cream all the time. So be it, I've done my best. I try to explain the importance of diet, of health and nutrition, but all that stuff starts now, guys. It starts now. Give your baby as varied a diet as you can and there is no benefit to the sugar because they're just gonna get used to it and they're just gonna want it more and more and more. Okay, so with all that said, what does my schedule look like with a 16 month old baby? We are now no longer separating between breastfeeding and milk giving moms and your baby doesn't need formula anymore and doesn't need a bottle anymore. The AAP says by month 18, your baby should be off the bottle. What's your schedule looking like? Okay, three meals up to two snacks and probably still two naps a day. Many parents ask, when will my baby lose the second nap? When will they transition to only one nap? This tends to happen at around 15 to 18 months of age. How do you know this happens? Well, what happens is you put your baby down for their morning nap and they stay awake. You go by, they're talking to themselves in the crib, they're not sleeping. You start to realize, hmm, maybe I should give them like lunch at 12 and then they start to take a nap, which is at that point like a two hour nap, sometimes even two and a half hours. At this stage, 16 months, my babies were still doing two naps, Gracie's still doing two naps. So I'm gonna give you guys the two nap schedule, but it is possible that breakfast and lunch are taking place with a mid-morning snack and then the afternoon nap. If you are still on the two nap schedule, here is what your schedule is gonna look like. And let's go. 7 a.m., breast milk or milk, then breakfast, sleep from 9.30 to 11. 11 a.m., breast milk or milk, then a solid lunch. Sleep from 1.30 to 3. 3 p.m., breast milk or milk, then a snack. 5 p.m., dinner, you could try giving the food first, which will allow you to give a milk feeding at around 6.30, and at 7 p.m., it is night-night. You might also be wondering, how many hours should my baby be sleeping a day? Babies this age need around 11 to 14 hours sleep over 24 hours. If you're lucky, it's gonna be the 14 hours. They're going to sleep 11 or so hours at night and you'll get three hours of naps if you're still doing two naps a day. Or maybe they're sleeping 11 and a half hours at night and you have a two hour nap in the early afternoon if you're down to one nap, something like that. 
the Bracy update. Bracy has had a really fun month. The big, big news, and you caught a glimpse of this last month, but it happened after I'd already shot my video and while I was editing my video is that Bracy started walking. He took his first steps very wobbly at first. He's getting stronger and stronger. I, I would say he can take like five steps. So that's been really, really exciting and we've been practicing it a lot. Bracy is babbling up a storm. La 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 la. Ba la 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 la. And seems to be like, blah, blah, blah. it seems like he's talking, he's gesturing, he's looking with this, you know, facial expression. So I think that words for us are just on the horizon. Bracy is going to be packing up this weekend. We're really excited because we're going to be going home to see Grandma and Grandpa in the U.S. So that is a big, big, big trip. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and I will see you back next month for month 17.